Okay, welcome to episode five. Episode five already of uh, A Beer with Atlas. I'm Rich. I'm Brian. And this week we're drinking, this one's going to be fun. Mr. Uh, Steve Seitner here in our office was super excited to bring these back for us. And it's it's a reach for us. It's a reach for me. How's that? You, yeah. You are very familiar with this style of beer. And in, in this beer particular, yes. And this, I think it's it's safe to say, uh, if you know Steve Seitner, he's, he's overly excited all the time. Uh, yes. So this is noticeably even more than that. Mm, so mm-hmm. this is a beer he's just, he's bananas for this. Pumpkin beer. Pumpkin, yes. So so this is Southern Tears Pumpkin Imperial Pumpkin Ale. And I got to tell you, full disclosure, I've never had a pumpkin beer before. I have had a, f- a few. Okay. I have had this one, and I like it so much that I am pur- I purchased a hat of this beer, and I'm wearing it today. I dug it out of the closet just for this. I okay, but then I'm excited to try this then. So, yeah. All right, let's uh, let's get into this thing here. Sure. So let the where we're gonna start today. Why don't Why is, don't you start with the well, Let's start with pumpkin beers in particular. We'll talk, right? Yeah, we'll talk about those, and we'll talk about just the style and and mm-hmm. some of that stuff. This is what you would consider um, to be called a field beer. Okay. And that's because it contains vegetables or something that's been grown in the field. So it's a, a style of beer all its own. Um, there's Usually you'll see it like this sort of beer. Um, you'll see some that have yams or sweet potatoes I've seen in beer. Um, there's a beer out of Kansas City. There's a brewery that's called Crane Brewing. Mm-hmm. And they basically were a home brewer that won a lot of awards with a beet beer. So that like, sounds that sounds awful. It is. It tastes like dirt clods. Oh, <laughs> but if, if you're in a, if you like beets, yeah, then this is the way. This is the beer for you. So it's a beer for people over the age of sixty five, at least. Yeah, okay. yeah. My mom's a fan of that beer. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so there is like a a subset or genre of beers, and and pumpkin beers fall into that field beer. Category. Field beer. Yep. All right. All right. Here we go. Let's. Uh, it doesn't smell like pumpkins necessarily. It almost smells like a. Like a like an Oktoberfest kind of a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Well, I guess you get some yeah. Hmm. So the cinnamon is pretty prevalent, I think. Way right forward cinnamon, yeah. Yeah. So on the bottle itself it says pumpkin pie in a glass. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It that's that's what it tastes like. That's one of the main detractors of this style of beer. Is people feel like it's too sweet. Or it's desserty. Um, people don't want to drink more than one of them. Yeah. Well, know? and especially with this one because we're we're talking we're up in the seven percent, aren't we? On this eight, one, eight point six. Yeah. Eight point six alcohol content. Yeah, that'll do it. In a in a twelve ounce, this is a twelve ounce. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So, give me some history on so on field beers. Here's then. here's what I found out about just. Not necessarily this specific beer, but the style of beer and, and the genre. So, um, the earliest that I could find a recipe or history of the recipe was like in the um, mid 1700s okay. here in the United States. Um, George Washington was a proponent of pumpkin beers. Oh. And he would actually um, use pumpkin in the grain bill so to speak so like he would brew with the pumpkin Mm -hmm. whereas nowadays most pumpkin beers i would probably assume this one um but a lot of the breweries that make them are basically just adding that spice packet at the end of the process sure um and how they were made up until basically the mid 1800s was the pumpkin was put right in the boil right in the in the mash and that's where the pumpkin flavor came from so it used to be from what i've heard and and seen was more of a mild flavor of beer not sweet right it was more earthy and um i would probably darker a little bit darker in color too back then more like a squash or uh Mm -hmm. uh, or or, yeah some kind of like a potato or like a sweet potato type of thing or something and it was it was along the lines of it was what they had it was harvest time and there was ingredients that they could use to Mm -hmm. to make beer so that's what they did and and that's how it was done for a long time Um, Not unlike some of the other beers we've talked about, this style, especially brewing with the pumpkin, kind of died off in the Mm mid-1800s, and it didn't come back until like the 80s, 1980s, um, with the home brewers and just the craft beer explosion. Mm -hmm. um, People started making pumpkin beers again, but it it was pretty dormant for 100 years or so. 
I, I want to, and this is just my, it, we've had this conversation multiple times. So I am very, I'm a novice at this, right? If you, if you, you've been doing this for a very long time. I've only been on the craft beer scene for maybe a year and a half, two years tops. This is like, this is like a sour to me where you have to, you got to get into it a little bit yeah. before that first, that first dream, like, oh no, what, mm-hmm. what am I getting into here? Yeah. Way forward cinnamon clove. Yep. You'll have those things. Um, standard pumpkin beer is always going to pretty much have cinnamon. It's going to have nutmeg, Mm -hmm. um, cloves, maybe cardamom. Those are the main fall spices that you're going to pick up. Some of them will have vanilla. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, they're usually, sometimes they make like an, another version of this beer. I think they make four or five different pumpkins at this brewery. Okay. Um, but one of them has, um, vanilla added and those are pretty tasty the nebraska brewing company one has vanilla added in there okay their one is called wick for brains that's pretty tasty here local i've seen that one before yeah yeah Yeah. so uh the other thing about pumpkin beers really is it's more of an idea uh than a specific style because it's basically you're putting pumpkin or the or the flavors that you associate with pumpkin into the beer so you can have them um in a stout you can have it in an ale you can do i've seen pumpkin porters i've had a couple of those really um i don't think i've seen a pumpkin ipa but you definitely could hmm. because it's just a vegetable and i've seen like other vegetable um ipas before that'd be weird because it wouldn't have that kind of citrusy sort of flavor no, it would to be it. like an earthier yeah it would probably be good with like a maltier you wouldn't want it in like a one of the ipas that we started with right. like a top and glass style but mm-hmm. if you had like a malt forward ipa mm-hmm. um it would probably be okay in that too i would bet i wonder if it was there's like uh, what's the one out of odell has one in colorado is it uh is it rapture rupture oh that red rye ipa or yes whatever. yeah something yeah. with rye would be good because mm-hmm. of that spice would kind of cut the the sweetness of the pumpkin it would yep. probably be pretty good too mm-hmm. so the other thing i i was thinking of when i started when we talked about what we were going to do um was just the standard pumpkin beers that are out there mm-hmm. and it's funny within the, the community of craft beer and also in the society as a whole, people at least right now feel like they're burned out on pumpkin spice, right? Like pumpkin spice. I've seen frosted flakes, mm. Cheerios. I've Thank seen you. Like Starbucks. Yeah. Or, yes. Like the pumpkinification of everything that's out there. Right. So yep. the, it's kind of like any product. Mm-hmm. There's been a major peak in the market and now we're coming back down on the other side. Yep. Um, that's also super true with pumpkin beer. So like in 2014, they had more styles of pumpkin beer, more breweries made pumpkin beer, and they sold more pumpkin beer than any other time in, that they've been recording this just because everybody was pushing pumpkin. Okay. So then a lot of, I don't know if it's hardcore folks, but like people that are really into the brewery scene, that sort of stuff, they started pushing back. And then retailers then felt that as well. So they thought, well, why are we taking up all this shelf space for 30 when we can just use that for three or four that mm-hmm. we know will sell the same amount of, of beer? Sure. So that's one of the reasons this one still is kind of the torchbearer for pumpkin beers. And they're pretty proud of their pumpkin beers there. Um, Elysian in Washington mm-hmm. State, they also make four or five different ones. They have a couple at their tap room that they specifically only do for one on tap. They make two or three different ones a year. Yeah. And they've probably in 20 years, I think Elysian's been around 25 years. They've made 20 or 25 different pumpkin beers because they just, they like to do it. Mm -hmm. So either you like it or you don't. Sure. I'm a person who doesn't like, I don't like pumpkin pie. Like it's more of a consistency thing for me, a texture. Okay. But I like the flavors. So I do like a cinnamon hint in my beer, and, and I definitely like a pumpkin stout. Like those are those are things that I enjoy. So mm-hmm. I'm on the pumpkin train. I'm ready or yeah. the hay rack, maybe. So on the on the pumpkin hay rack, yeah. So I, I guess that's a that's a that's a good point that it, it, you won't necessarily find pumpkin beers in stores. You'll find some, but mm-hmm. not a ton. Not anymore, yeah. But you're going to find them at the breweries themselves. Yep, you you'll find those there, and it'll be this time of year. Um, it's it's like. Um, Oh, I would say like, it's like the holiday creep, right? Mm-hmm. So like the one holiday hits, Halloween's coming up, but guess what? Christmas stuff is getting probably yep. already in the store, or getting close to it, right? I saw Shiner's Christmas a- Christmas Ale in See? Hy-Vee already. So yeah. it's like, you're probably almost past the time because the, the window is short for them to sell this stuff. Mm-hmm. They've start, they've stopped brewing pumpkin beers already, I guarantee you that. Right. And they're just trying to get get rid of whatever they've got to, you know, get the next seasonal. Uh, some of the research I did talked about seasonal beers making up 
about 20% of all craft beer sales. So we're okay. talking standard, you know, your flagship beers all the time, the fat tire or the Boulevard wheat yep. making up 80%. This type of beer falls into the set of seasonals where it's um, just due to the weather or due to the time mm-hmm. of the calendar of the year, this is when they make this beer. And pumpkin beers make up 8% of that 20 or whatever is left over. That's so. a big portion. I do. I wouldn't have anticipated that yeah. at all. I would. I would think that Oktoberfest would make up probably the largest style, maybe. Yeah, you would. You would think so, and, and it might fall back down that way because um, a couple years ago it really, really spiked, mm-hmm. really peaked, and it was kind of a fun time. But it was also weird because like everybody was doing it, but not everybody was doing it well, mm-hmm. uh, like the rap song says. Yep. So um, they stopped making them. Some of those breweries <laughs> stopped making them. Uh, but the ones that did it right and have done it for a long time continue. So there's mm-hmm. like, um, let me check here. I wrote it down because I knew I wanted to say it. Okay, Shipyard um, is a brewery brewery in Portland, Maine. Okay. They've got um, one of the better mass-produced, across-the-country available pumpkin beers. And it has a picture. It's kind of like the Headless Horseman. Okay. Um, and it's got a jack-o'-lantern head, and he's sitting on a horse. It's yep. got a blue label. And it's a really good pumpkin beer um they sell from what i saw on their website 400 they're going to make 400,000 cases of that a wow. year wow and that's more than they sell of any of their beers and it's just for like a month or six weeks of time throughout the entire year really they're making a pretty good chunk of their yearly money just on this pumpkin beer interesting so Bob and Patty Hinkst are in Maine right now. Mm-hmm. Bob, I'm talking directly to you. Yeah. I'm going to need some of this. You have three weeks. By the time this airs, you have two weeks left in Maine. This is the perfect time. I'm going to need some of that beer. Yeah, we're going to need that. Mm-hmm. Make that a priority. <laughs> there we go. So the other one that's around, and, and when I was talking about how the style kind of fell off and then came back in the 80s, the first um, place that really made it available um, is a place called Buffalo Bills. And this is one you can find here, too. It'll say, like, America's Original or the United States Original Pumpkin Beer, something like that on the label. Um, it has a real black licorice anise flavor to me. Ooh. Uh, it pours pretty dark. And it's been around since 85. Okay. So that was, like, the first two-market craft pumpkin beer. Wow. I mean, that, that rivals Sam Adams' Time frame. Time, yeah. time frame, right? I mean, and this yeah. Is, and that's from, I think they're from California, in California, I believe. Oh, interesting. So, so a little bit about Southern Tier. Um, they have four different locations now. They were founded in 2001 in Lakewood, New York. Um, I love their tagline. And it's right when you go to their website, their tagline says, why the hell not? <laughs> Instantly, that grabbed me. Like yeah. that, I love it. Why the hell not? It's easy to find reasons to not do stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, so I, I I I really dig that. So they are up to four state of the art brew houses. They bottle at these four different state of the art brew houses. They are bottling ten thousand beers per hour now. Dang. And we're still not like Nebraska does not get Southern nope. Tier. We don't. I've I have specifically driven to Kansas City to get mm-hmm. Southern Tier beer before, and then magically it showed up at my house. And there I you didn't go. Drive it back. Hmm. Hmm. There's no bootlegging happening. No, none whatsoever. I've had some in Colorado before. There's some distribution in Colorado, limited, but there's some. Yeah, um, it, and it's more of their it's more of their um, seasonal stuff that that I've seen there. So uh, the four different locations, and each one of these is open for, and they all have different uh, times for brewery tours and uh, and and their tap room. But Charlotte, North Carolina, Cleveland, Ohio. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and then the original in Lakewood, New York. So they're a big regional player on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. Okay. The most recent one was the Pittsburgh location that they opened within, I think it was like 2016, if I remember right on the website. I I didn't write that down. That could be wrong. But that was the most recent one that they've opened. What I think is interesting is, so total 45,000 square foot warehouse just in Lakewood, New York. Um, They have... They're distilling now, too, so they're doing spirits oh, okay. there as well. 70% of what they, uh, on the distillery side, is all sourced directly from New York State. So st- I think that's that's pretty amazing. Like ingredients and materials and all that stuff? Everything, yeah, from the state that they originated in. Yeah, that's pretty good. I think that's fantastic. That in, as you know, craft brewers, I found in this community, there's a lot of liking to give back. 
Mm-hmm. Like they they appreciate their they they appreciate their constitu- their constituency. They appreciate the the city that they're in, um, and they and most of them like to give back, and yeah. that's no more apparent than in you know with with Southern Tier. That it's 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 very very obvious that they're very proud to be from New York State. That that they they love the state that they're in, and they love to give back. It's one of the cool things about the brewery community too is that, like they they know that you're gonna you're going there on you know not an accident, right? Right. This is not a daily need that you're requiring to survive. So this is yep. something you're going to do for fun. It's a destination. And they know you're going to pay a little bit more, right? Yep. So then they can use the better ingredients. They can source that stuff mm-hmm. locally where the, where the big brewery is not going to do that, right? So, right. you know, you're going to pay more, but you're going to get better for the most part. Mm-hmm. And they can then give those sorts of jobs, whether it's um, just here in, in Nebraska now, there's like a malt warehouse mm-hmm. that there's, they're selling now two Nebraska breweries where before you couldn't, you had to go out of state for that. There's hop farms here in Nebraska. Mm-hmm. There's um, all that sort of stuff, whether it's like you said, if they're building barrels or whatever, and they're getting wood for that, like mm-hmm. it's cool to be able to give those jobs back locally too. Mm-hmm. That's one of the things I think is really fun with Nebraska is, I mean, very agricultural based here. Um, and, and there are, there are farm subsidies available to farmers that are growing hops now rather than, corn, wheat, Mm -hmm. whatever, you know, whatever else we grow here, there's, there's subsidies available if they want to use part of their land for hops, which is, I, we didn't have five, 10 years ago. No, for sure not. And it's cool to go. Sometime we'll have to maybe try it out, but there's a, there's a pretty good hop farm that has a tap room in it too. That's pretty cool down by, down about Plattsmouth area. Oh, that's not far at all. No, not too bad. Interesting. So if you are anywhere on the East coast, more than likely you'll be able to get Southern tier. I, Okay, so I finished mine, and oh, I'm I'm babying mine. It's, it, it really it's pumpkin pie in a glass. Yeah. You don't want to drink more than one. No, nope. but it is it is unique. It is, and this especially this beer. The longer you let it warm up, the cinnamon comes out more and more, mm-hmm. which I'm a fan of. So that's kind of why I'm taking my time. Yeah. Um, if for some reason you're where we're at and you can't get this, um, I did see that the number one for like the last six years in a row selling pumpkin beer mm-hmm. is Blue Moon. They have a pumpkin, Harvest Pumpkin Ale. Really? And it's like number one just because of, you know, you can get Blue Moon everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, so they they threw some pumpkin in the in the batch, and it's the number one selling pumpkin beer. All of a sudden, just Dolan lit up. He was not paying attention until you said Blue Moon. Blue Moon, and, and he then, was like, oh, yeah. Oh. I know, I know where that's Blue at. Blue Moon? I'll For take sure. one of those. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, Brian, thank you. Another... Uh, I, this was this was interesting. This was out of our comfort zone for sure. Out of my comfort zone yeah. for sure. It's fun. It was. It's a. Uh, it's more of like I said. It's more of an idea than a style. Mm-hmm. At least for this one. Yeah. So we will continue next week on the seasonal train, and uh, I think it's just it's that time of year. There's going to be some fun stuff coming up. So if you have not subscribed to our podcast, please do so um, either through SoundCloud or on the uh, on the iTunes Store. We'll always share these out on Facebook, too. But if you want the most up-to-date one or notifications as we do these every week, please subscribe. We'll see you next week. Thanks. Thanks.